Hello world, and we are back. My name's Kyle Fischel. This is going to be episode 25 of my poker vlog, and I'm really excited to talk about this one. I played a session yesterday, which was September 7th, at Orange City, and I won over $1,000 again. It's like three sessions in a row where I've been doing very, very well. But today, what I'm going to talk about is how to take advantage of specific table dynamics against an opponent who you are kind of battling with pretty consistently pretty often across a short time span like an hour hour and a half well the first hand that I'm gonna talk about I am under the gun and I have ace king off suit both black and I know they're both black that's how I personally just memorize my cards and don't double check them if they're both black it's ace king no matter what the board is if there's three clubs three spades I know I have one high one I raise it to 20 only the button calls, he's a very competent player, plays very big, plays 5-5 five, five PLO, so, you know, 2-5, no limits, not really high stakes for him. So he's, very, he's actually very good, very competent, and he's on the button. Not the best position for me, but the blinds fold, and we are heads up. The flop is ace, jack, 10, two clubs. Now, on this board, because I have such a strong hand, I think it's best to check. I must admit, Jack, I thought I had you figured. It turns out you're a hard man to predict. An aggressive, competent player, he's likely to value bet any ace, maybe a jack, and he's also going to bluff a lot when he has nothing. So I think checking is the best option here. I check it to him, he checks back. Not the greatest result. The term is the ace of clubs. It's a pretty good card for me because I know my ace king's both black. Obviously, I have the king clubs. So now with enough flush draw and three aces, I think that it's time to check again because now he's definitely got a fire at it. And I have this board pretty locked up. I don't really know what would call a bet at all because I already have three aces. I have the nut flush. I think I got to give him a chance to bluff at it. I don't know what he, if he could value bet worse. So I check and unfortunately, he checks back. The river is a queen of clubs. That has never happened to me before. And honestly, I am so excited, I don't even know what to do. So I just grab one $25 chip and throw it in there. And he quickly calls and I'm just like, I have a royal. Because of how quickly he called, obviously I could have got more. But at the time, I was just so excited. Nothing like that ever happened to me. And yes, it's like a $100 pot, but it has to make the vlog because I thought it was pretty cool. Now, because there is no content out there to teach you how to play a royal, here is the best line to take. It is a strong over bet. Like it's a $50 pot, you need to bet like $300 because any full house is going to call ace jack, ace uh, queen, ace 10, any of that. Any pocket pairs that somehow had a set, kind of unlikely, but... Also, maybe the nine of clubs. Maybe, miraculously, he'll have eight nine of clubs and you can fully cooler him. So I think just a ridiculous overbet. Hope that a full house, maybe a king, maybe a nine of clubs. All that stuff's probably going to call. Don't get too excited. Think things through. Make your money. All right. So for the next three hands, I am versing the exact same opponent in the same dynamic he is on my direct left on the button and I'm in the cutoff for all three of these hands. For the first one, because the button, the small blind, the big blind are relatively weak players, I'm opening my range when it's folded to me at the cutoff because I can take advantage of it, get that seven bucks when they fold, and if not play a hand relatively in position against weak players and make my money that way. So for the first hand, I have King six of diamonds, not a fantastic hand, but definitely a hand that when folded to me, only got to get through three weak players, I'll make it 20. Button and the small blind call, big blind folds. The flop is eight, five, one diamond. Now, small blind checks, checks to me. At this point, I don't really think that I can rep anything on this board, but I have a strong hand. I'm going to go into a check call mode, see what happens. Button bets 35. Kind of a big bet. To me, it really just looks like he's betting because it's checked to him. I really don't think he has anything at all. And my plan is to, to continue kind of loosely. I think I can outplay him on later streets. If any high diamond comes, I can check raise. I have a lot of moves that I'm already planning out. Small blind folds. 
turn is a king. Well, no need to make plans anymore. I have the best hand all the time now. Don't need to worry about it. I checked him. He checks back. River is a king. So, running pretty good. I lead out for 50, hoping to get a call because I think that I should have sized higher here because... Because running kings, it makes it really unlikely for me to have a king. I really shouldn't have a king here. I just so happen to do. Now, I think that any nine or eight would probably call and think they're good, but they're not. He folds. Comes a spark straight to the man! Next hand, same player. I'm in the cutoff. I have king four of spades. So fold to me, I make a 20. Uh, this time the button and the big blind call, small blind folds. Flop is ace six four, one spade. So flop a pair, kind of the same dynamic here. Um, I have a backdoor flush draw again. This time I have a pair, not a gut shot. So I'm pretty happy to go into check call mode because the button just it seems like a player that's only betting because it's checked to him and never actually has a hand. Big blind checks. I check. He bets 30 this time. Pretty easy call because I have a pair and a lot of backdoors and think that I can outplay him. And the blind folds. The turn is a king again. Yes, we are running good in this game. I check to him. Hope he bets. Hope this time he actually does have an ace, but he doesn't. He checks back. And the river is a 10. Not worried about anything. I should have the best two pair here all day. Hope he has an ace. I bet 45. He folds. I am getting the impression that he's just betting and then folding when it's aggressed on. Come in! So I'm keeping that in mind as we go into our third hand against the same player across one hour. So for this hand, same thing. Folded to me in the cutoff. I have 9, 10 of diamonds. Definitely a hand I'm going to be raising. Suited connector that's kind of big. I make it 20. He calls and both blinds calls. $80 pot. To the flop, which comes six, seven, deuce, one diamond. And again, this is really a, a decent board for me. Uh, and I'm going to go into check call mode. Check, check, checks to me. I can continue on any diamond, any overcard. There's a lot of cards that give me a hand, so I'm good to just check call. Button bets again. This time he bets 45. So he sized up a little bit. Uh, the blinds fold. I'm never folding here. So I call, especially because at this point, my plan is to just lead out on any high over card that comes. I don't think I'm going to get there three times. That'd be ridiculous. But the plan is to use the dynamic of this history of when I'm aggressing on him after I call him on the button, he's folded every time. So I think a standard $40, $50 river, river bet should get the job done again, like it's done in the past. The turn is the ace. Of hearts not diamonds wish it was diamonds but it's hearts I'm so happy with that because now I'm already planning on the forty fifty dollar bet on the river it goes check check but at that point I'm also thinking maybe this is the part where he's gonna get fed up with my nonsense and just put his foot down and call it the one time I don't have it well no need for that thought the eight of spades is the river and now because that thought comes is that now He's fed up with the nonsense. He's going to call super light. I overbet the pot. I bet 150. He looks pained by that. He really does. He thinks about it for probably a minute counting it out. And it was kind of funny because he paid half in green chips, half in red chips. And even, he, even though he had enough in green, it just, even the call just looked so light that the overbet on this dynamic of me just always aggressing on him worked out for me. The legend! Now, I think another lesson to take from this story is that, yes, you can have a guy that's been doing that to you for an hour, two hours, and yes, it is actually possible for him to have it every time. That, that whole mindset of, he can't have it every time. He can. All right, so for these next three hands I'm going to talk about, I'm also versing um, the same player for these three specific hands. For these three, I'm sitting in seat four, and this player is sitting in seat two at the time. So we're kind of across from each other, and sometimes the positions will change for, between who acts first and second. Being against the same player, you can build up kind of a history with that player and take advantage of things like a short downswing. So we'll get into that. This specific player has made some very strong moves. 
He's someone would bet 100. He'd raise to 350, show five high when the person folds. He's he's been battling. So I'll keep that in mind as I play. Early position, I have ace king offsuit. I make it 25 when one person limps to me. Folds to him, he makes it 100. And he's actually three bet me three times previously to this. And I've actually folded all three times. Didn't really have a hand where I wanted to continue. But seeing the moves he's been making and actually having ace king, I consider four betting. I think that this hand plays fine post flop. And I want to kind of control the size of the pot. I want to be able to blast off like six, 700 into me. We're just going to call, see a flop. Flop is ace king 10, two diamonds. Great flop for me. I can check to him and hope he blasts off this time. This time is the first time he doesn't just fire away. He bets 75, so down bets the flop, and because he's been blasting off so much, I think that this time he actually has something and that I can get some more money in, hopefully just get it in while, while I have the best hand because any pair plus diamond, any gut shot diamond, there's so many hands he could have that he's going to continue king queen king jack it's just he has the capability of continuing with a lot of hands so i go to count out 300 and he folds while i'm counting it out saying he only had six high i don't re recommend three betting with six anything but like i said he's he got me to fold three times doing it you know that's i don't take anything personally i don't get emotional with this i don't think anyone's out to get me he clearly was i just play the long game I make it a 20 pre-flop three times and fold. Then I make it 20, 25 one time. He makes it 100 and bets 75. He got 60 off me. I got 175 off him. Like, you know, just play the long game. Don't take anything personally. Just let things happen. So this player from the last hand, he is under the gun and he makes it 20. There are two callers to me. I have ace jack of diamonds. Uh, plays good post-flop. Not really trying to three bet it because if I get four bet it I kind of have to fold so we'll just call one other player calls so five ways to a flop which comes ten nine seven one diamond it's actually a pretty good flop for me like I said I got a lot of backdoor possibilities any diamond any queen or king I get double gutted um ace or jack I should have the best hand so when the undergun player bets 60 it folds to me i'm never really going to fold here because there's so many cards on the turn that can help me like i mentioned i call everyone else folds so me and this player are heads up turn is a three of diamonds actually a really good card for me or i got to a backdoor flush draw when he checks to me i think that i can uh bet pretty big here hopefully he folds if he's bluffing if he had some kind of like ace king ace queen hand he should fold a lot of the time here and when he calls, I have the chance to hit a diamond or my gut shot. I have a lot of chances when he calls. So I bet 100. He thinks for a while. He actually looks pained. I don't know if it's fake or not, but he eventually calls. And he has about the river is the three of clubs. So it bricks pretty hard. He checks to me. I think about betting for a little bit. It's the honest ones you want to watch out for. Because you can never predict they're going to do something incredibly stupid and my thought process is i guess i need a 10 or a 9 to fold he really should never have a 7 here otherwise i mean i beat king queen like i beat some hands so doug polk always says never bet on river pairs as a bluff it's a bad idea so i choose to take that advice and i check he says nothing how much nothing literally nothing and he actually mucks and i show ace high and he just couldn't believe it, so that's a that's a fun one. So against this same player, you know, he started when I got to the table, he had like twenty five hundred. He has been pounded and pounded and pounded. Some by me, sometimes by other people. So he is the button straddle. Under the gun makes it 25. Three callers to me. Two black aces. Yes, we know that one. Anything else? 
because the player is straddling, he's tilting, he's going hard, he's throwing the money in there, I am just hoping that I can bet a lot, get him to do a poor shove, win that way. Agreed. So I quickly just grab, I have one black chip, two green chips, just toss 150 in there, hoping for a mistake by that player, which does happen. He goes all in for about 350. I, everyone else folds. I just throw a chip in, turn my cards over. Flop actually wasn't that great. King, queen, uh, deuce, two diamonds. And I say it's not that great, not because he has kings or queens, but because king, queen is strong possibility. Turn is another diamond, river's a blank. He shows black sevens, so not really a hand you want to, you know, four bet all in, but. We rode his downswing to make a lot of money this session, so that is the lesson, you know. Pay attention to how people are, are running because they'll play worse and they'll make mistakes, and that is how you make some money. There's no other game in which fortunes can change so much from hand to hand. A brilliant player can get a strong hand cracked, go on tilt, and lose his mind along with every single chip in front of him. So, if you have watched all the way to this part, thank you for watching. I appreciate all the support. Please consider subscribing. I buy into the game for $800, and I cashed out for $1930, so a profit of $1130, and... You know, there's going to be more to come. Thank you.